Charlotte, why do you think we struggle with this question? Oh, I think it's because the world is changing. Mm. I, and, and what I mean by that is we've got within Africa, the continent itself, we've got issues such as tribalism. Yes. I know, for example, my grandparents were not allowed to marry because of the different tribes that they came from. So in terms of identity, when you start having tribes that intermix that we're not supposed to mm. and they generate um, a, a new generation of, of children, those kids kind of get um, confused yes. because society says, that you're coming from one half of one tribe, one half of the other tribe, and you start questioning where you fit in. Mm. And I think that the same mm. feelings that you have in terms of tribalism as a child, in terms of struggling between mom and dad, yes. is what mixed uh, racial couples also struggle with, yes. etc. So identity for me as an African is what you identify with. It's, it's a personal thing. Yes. I don't think, yes. I think we should move away from what society identifies African as 100%. being. That's what I mean. 100%. Yeah. It's an innate feeling it's your inner being mm. you know I mean I've accepted that, that definition much more because mm. I think that this whole creating this African identity or this tribal identity it just serves to create divisions I think I mean mm. for, for one like you said sometimes children struggle and you know um, mixed, mixed race relationships mm. don't always flourish because of that yes. I think those divisions have been so so deep and I wonder why why must we identify ourselves with different, I don't know, nations or cultures, you know. Yeah. I, don't know. I think I think don't you think it's just the roots of where we come from as a people? Yes. Um, you know, when you look at life experiences, the things that we've been through, you know, oftentimes you link it back to, you know, the person that you end up becoming, you know? You are so molded by the experiences and the cultural norms around you mm -hmm. that you tend to become that. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm gonna put something quite controversial out there. <laughs> 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 it's to say how do I put this? You know, before, I think when you got to a certain age, like the, as soon as you turned 18, for instance, or 21, mm -hmm. your parents allowed you to go out there and explore and yeah. become your true self. Yeah. Um, you were allowed to choose your, your degree, yes. um, whatever it is, your career choices, of course, yeah. you were allowed to do that on your own. Yeah. Yeah. But before that, you were everything that your parents were. Mm -hmm. so you, were you, you were on their passport, yeah. you were on their passport. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. yes. Okay. So don't you find that um, that conformity of being under your parents' wing almost um, almost determined the kind of person you were. So same with uh, kids who aren't necessarily allowed to go to university. They end up being that which their parents are. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we are, have, been, have been given this liberation and this ability to, to think exactly. freely, which is honestly a Western mindset, do you not think? To think freely, yes, <laughs> to some degree, to some yes. degree. Yes. Um, definitely, yes. Western culture is more liberal than mm -hmm. than African. I mean, yes. I've yet to find someone who contests that. Yeah. But I think Africa, the identity, and uh, is becoming so merged with the Western that it is almost reforming and reshaping and redefining yes. what it is to be African. Yes. So in today's world, uh, I'm struggling with. To be honest, I'm struggling with what uh, being African is because I have white friends 
who have been here six generations yes. that identify as African. Mm. And it's this constant debate, are they African or not? Yes. Are Indian people African or not? Mm. I mean, it just gets so confusing, yes. I must be honest. I, I think South Africa is slightly different from most other African countries. Mm. I think we are a little bit more liberal than the other African countries. And I think that because we share a commonality with Americans where a lot of different nationalities came, come mm. and reside here. Mm. I mean, in America, there's so many different nationalities. I mean, there's Hispanics, yes, yes, you know, yes, a yes. whole mixture. Mm. South Africa, there's Indians, mm. or other, you know, cultures from all the different countries in Africa. So mm. I think we're a little bit more liberal. I think that maybe we, unlike other African um, nations, we would struggle more in identifying with our, you know, our culture, you know, who we are, you know, mm-hmm. what it means to be African. Yeah. Now, I want to be controversial. It's okay. my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think what you've just said uh, feeds into the concept of xenophobia, if at all? You know, mm. thinking about it. So, if you're struggling to identify being African, would mm. you resonate or relate with somebody else who is very strong in their African roots or what they think Africa is? And would that create any friction, if at all? I do definitely mm. feel like some South Africans do have a superiority yeah. Yeah. complex. Yeah. So they see other um, African nationals yes. as less than. Yes. So they that does kind of manifest in you know. Some of the hatred and you know just you know there's mm-hmm. I think there's some some of that. It's I want it Afrophobia. That's the other yeah. word that mm-hmm. I use this yes. year. Okay. Definitely. Okay. So I think that contributes to that Afrophobia. Mm-hmm. But you guys find that the women though, and I'm gonna put out that the women in yeah. Somalia, in Ethiopia. You know, in Eritrea, yeah, those yeah. features they are striking yes, yes, globally. Yes. Striking. Yes. That's that's. You see, that's what confuses me is that everyone in the world seems to think that it's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. everywhere you go. Yeah. You know, you could put her in Paris, yes. in South Africa, in Nigeria. They yes. would think she is beautiful, gorgeous. Yeah. gorgeous. Mm. That is that is just it's, it's, it's such a phenomenal thing. Yeah. Yeah. That I found. I mean, I mean, the likes of Alec Wek are millionaires from their looks. I mean, she's tall, she's skinny, she's very dark, and she has yes. very different skin. Yeah. Oh. Good skin, yes. very striking yes. features, not like the Western look. She's not, no. uh, she's not typically beautiful, if I can put it that way, yes. as per society. Yes. She's not Beyonce, yes. but clearly she had something unique um, to, to sell, which you couldn't get in Europe. That's why she made it on the catwalks, etc. But I think perspective on Africa or African beauty is regional. Hmm. I want to come back okay. to it. <laughs> I like that and I want to come back to it. Um, we'll be right back. Oh, ladies, I just want to go back to the um, inner being of identities. You know, yeah. we, we discussed quite a bit on the outer, on the outer appearances of that. Yeah. But just let me let me put you on the spot, Lumile. Who yeah. are you? Who am I? Ooh. I'm an African woman. I am a woman who loves life, a woman who's trying to break away from all the labels that I have been uh, taught growing up by society, by friends, by family, a woman who's trying to find my inner person, Mm. you know, only recently I've I, I, I'm, somebody, someone said to me, you know, you're a very gentle soul. Yes. I'm spending time with you and talking to you. You're a very gentle soul. You sometimes put on a hard exterior to protect yourself, mm-hmm. but you're a gentle soul. So I want to go back to that gentle soul. Wow. You know? So I wow. want to define my own being. Charlotte, who are you? Jeez. I think I'm still on the journey to mm. self-discovery. Mm. I mean, in fact, I'll never get there. That's the beauty of life. But I also want to say that I'm definitely African. Mm. I'm so proud to be Ugandan, but I always differentiate that for me, um, Uganda is my biological mom Mm. and South Africa is my adopted mom. Mm. And I love them differently because they're different, um, they've taught me different things Mm. and they've played different roles in my life. Ultimately, I'm still on the African continent Mm. and yeah, I think I'm just truly African and um, a child of God. Wow. wow! I love it. I love it. I love it. I thought you were gonna was. I thought you were gonna struggle with the question. I thought you were gonna ask me. Like, friend, why are you talking about the spots? <laughs> but you came back so nicely. Well Ooh, done. Wow! I thought, you were <laughs> I thought you'd never. I thought you'd never. Um. Wow, Lorato, I am love. Um. I am love. I am. I am a free spirit. Um. I'm a child of God. Um. I'm a proud mom. 
I'm a creative. Yeah. That's who I am. Yeah. <laughs> I did the respect for a I think I your website. Oh, no. <laughs> now I know and I must say that um, over the years I've evolved quite a bit mm -hmm. I mean we spoke about how our parents play such a big role in um, the people that we become mm -hmm. um, yes sure my mom did play a huge role in the person that I am today mm -hmm. but I'm glad to say that I think I've evolved quite beautifully into mm -hmm. my own being yeah mm -hmm. um, and, and, and and how I know this is that we disagree often and oh, it's okay it? now and now it's okay <laughs> oh, <laughs> Do you have more now that you're getting older? Yes. Because you're moving a little bit away from yes. the, the benchmark. I, I am now my own person. I'm not living yeah. under her shadow. I'm not trying to please her all the time. Okay. I'm trying to have an opinion. I'm trying to have a conversation. Yes. That's who I am these days. Oh, wow. So. Good for you. <laughs> We're back and we're still talking about identities. Joining us now is our special guest, Amongwe. Um, How are you? I'm good, thank you. And yourself? I'm good, I'm good. Yes, Ladies, Amu um, is a writer, she is a speaker, she is a oh. thought leader, and oh. she is very well traveled. So we are very honored to have you on the show. I'm very excited to be here together. Good, good. Amu, um, well, my first question for you is, you know, you've traveled the world and you've seen it all, but I have to ask, who are you truly? Who am I truly? Yes. <laughs> I am African, good. Um, first good. and foremost. Mm. Um, I grew up in Bulawani, moved to Pretoria and spent the past eight years or so in Johannesburg. Yes. Um, and I'm really passionate about the African continent mm. and would absolutely love to see it developed and out of poverty in my lifetime. Um, and so that's one of my big life pursuits. Those are quite like big ambitions, you know, <laughs> in your lifetime. Oh. People are talking about 2015, 2020 goals in terms of Africa, etc. Yeah. So it's nice that you've got a closer perspective, you know. But I think what I'm curious to find out from you is what inspired you to love Africa so early in life. Because let's be honest, ladies, it's mm. not every day or typical mm. for somebody to be so passionate at such a young age. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think they're probably too two big things. Yeah. Um, one was actually, um, there was this book that I was reading on leadership mm -hmm. and it spoke about an African kind of leadership and how it was so important as African leaders to know who we are mm -hmm. as Africans um, before we even start leading. Mm -hmm. And I think prior to reading this book, I'd read a whole bunch of other leadership books, but they were sort of more... I don't know, sort of like Western type books. Yes. Uh, but something about reading this book and about the importance of knowing who you are as an African mm. unlocked something in me, right? Mm. And kind of brought about this intrigue. And then the second thing was, um, in terms of the work that I do, I've gotten an opportunity to do a lot of work that um, looks at the African continent, you know, whether it's around like jobs, you know, mm -hmm. or like poverty or just the growth of the African continent. And I think in seeing a lot of the literature around that, mm -hmm. um, there was just kind of another like intrigue to say, okay, mm -hmm. what is this Africa? And I guess that's kind of where my passion really um, developed. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was going to ask, but I'm curious, how do you define the African identity? Yes. Because, you know, every time you Google or pick up a book, there's so many different even contrasting definitions. How do you define it? Yeah, I agree. It's 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 quite a tricky thing to try to define, right? Yes. But I think for me, at the first point, was really um, identifying with who Amu is, you know. Mm. And I realized, I think more so, even as a South African, right? Given the history of our country and where we come from, yeah. I just felt a sort of like breakthrough when I understood. Um, that I'm sort of African mm. and then um, sort of identifying as that. Yeah. Uh, but I think broadly it's really about just knowing who you are, understanding who you are, mm. being comfortable with who you are, knowing where you come from, mm. what you mm. need to mm. That's mm. beautiful. I think it's so beautiful because you know a lot of the times when you, you get on the internet you find all these sometimes derogatory images of yes, the dark yes, continent. Yeah. Yes. 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 Children with snot running down their noses, you yeah. know, yeah. 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 Lovely definition of it, you know. It completely dispels what the rest of the world sometimes thinks of Africa. Yes, yes, yes. absolutely. 
But you journeyed, so I want to talk about this journey though, because you traveled all along uh, using public transport. And tell us which countries made the biggest impact and what is it that you were going after? What did you see there? that we don't see every day here. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, the main reason I went on this trip again was, you know, having read all this material about the African continent. Mm. And I was, just, I was just really curious to see it, you know, and I really wanted to see it from the lens of someone who lives that life, like, on the day-to-day, mm-hmm. and which is why I chose public transport. And then, again, going on my own, because there's just something about traveling on your own that gives you a completely different perspective to when you're traveling in the comforts yes. of other people. Mm. Um, That's pretty bold though. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's more about yeah. bravery, yeah. I think. I can't even it's go really to Cape Town on my own. I don't know, I'm a special friend. <laughs> to travel mm-hmm. African. I had creature comforts, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to even mm-hmm. compete mm-hmm. with you. But it is not an easy place, depending on the villages that you go to in rural areas. So how did you make mom or dad or family comfortable that yeah. you're going to be okay? And you said, yeah. yeah. So that was the hardest part, to be honest, like telling my parents um, that I just told them. And what I tried to do is throughout my trip, just keep them in touch and contact, just told them what I was doing. Um, just to make sure that they're quite safe as well and they feel okay with my decisions. But it was very hard. Mm. Um, I don't think my mom would have allowed you. Never. Even <laughs> 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 like, at your age. I don't think I probably like, told them more than like, yeah, than yeah. asked. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's happening. But if I told my mom, she'd be like, eh? <laughs> <laughs> continent yes. we all have this image in our mind yes. we yeah. accepted yes. and you know we're going to become some i don't know some barefoot woman in a village or something yes. 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 but did it yeah. was any any of it a surprise though yes. what you found yes. when you got there um yeah i mean i think the biggest thing that i took away from the trip honestly was just like the kindness of people mm. um, and learning to trust people um, and maybe like one crazy story is how one night I was on a bus from um, Zambia to Tanzania and this yeah. bus ride was meant to be two days long. So I left Zambia on like a Tuesday midday, I was meant to arrive in Tanzania on Thursday midday. Uh, for some reason we ended up in Tanzania at midnight, okay? And we reached our destination. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, awkward. Um, and so I just asked the bus driver if I could sleep in the bus for the night because I needed a place to sleep and I didn't know anyone. And he was like, okay, I'll we'll make a plan. And so he literally walked with me to the tech, to the bus station mm-hmm. and spoke to the guys there and they gave me like three chairs to sleep on. You know, and it was absolutely beautiful. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what was oh, beautiful? Oh, the next morning, the kindness with the 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 chairs. I mean, yeah, and and literally woke up the next morning. Mm. Uh, these guys, and it was men, funny enough. Yeah. Uh, and these guys were so kind to me. Offered me breakfast. Um, Oh, no. And uh, took me on a tour of Tanzania, and I was wow. going to Zanzibar later on in the day. And they basically went with me to the ferry. I mean, I just have so many beautiful stories mm-hmm. of that. I um, love that you said that. Do you know someone actually said uh, they defined uh, being African yes. as that continent that maintained um, most of its cultures. Mm. And we mm. preserved our cultures mm. better than most countries, yes. or yeah, yeah. better than most continents, so mm. to speak. And most of that was that sense of community, mm. how mm. Mm. humanity. Yes. 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 So I love yes. that you've just you've experienced just that. You know, so I think that's so awesome. Yeah, it's and we, we don't hear a lot of those kind of stories mm. because ideally, mm. in the kind of world we should be living in those that those should be our everyday stories right yes. but because we're so like 
I don't know, I guess heard or broken as a nation, mm. those are the stories that freak us out. Mm. Yeah, so there's this weird duality at play. You know, I asked you a question at the beginning, who are you? And having heard your story now, I can safely say that you are bold and you're exploitative. Yeah. That's who you are. Because it takes a certain type of person to do what she has just done. And also elements of humbleness. So that's why I'm, 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 I'm thinking of the word Ubuntu and what it stands for. Yeah. You know, yeah. humanity, looking after your brother instead of yourself first. Mm. So even you, and I think it was a journey of self-discovery for Amu. But I think Amu related to the journey because you were already some of those things already. Mm. You know, if mm. that makes sense. Mm. Mm. 64 days. Yeah. <laughs> Did you run out of money at any point? Um, no, it was um, just easy. not really, not really. Hey, um, I mean, it was a very low cost trip, as you can imagine. Yeah. Like, just using public transport or two. Um, I was staying in backpackers, so you're paying on average like 100 rand a night. Mm. In some countries, I was staying with uh, friends of friends. Okay. Um, and then also, food is also quite low cost. So, yes. the total trip was, was actually not. That Obviously, there's French, there's um, Portuguese that's spoken abroad. How, how was that? Did, did you find any difficulties with that? Yeah, that was quite intense as well because mm. I spent obviously I spent most of my time in East Africa and mm. I speak Swahili mostly. Yes, yes. Um, and I, I spent about a month in between Tanzania and Zanzibar, and so mm. the most spoken language was Swahili. Yes. You know, I learned a few words like Kribu trafiki and you know mm. all these other words but I think I spend a lot of time one just like in silence taking in the language mm. and two speaking slowly and I remember when I got to Kenya where I met more people who spoke um, English yeah. all of a sudden my, my world was kind of like rough a bit because mm. when you speak to people who don't speak your own language over a, a long period of time you just learn to you don't structure your sentences, you yeah. speak in words yeah. you know, yeah. that are easy for them to hear. Mm. All of a sudden, I was back in Kenya, mm. and like my language was a bit, you know, and I had to like reteach myself quickly to just speak normally. Um, I've been an awesome experience. <laughs> I have never, I honestly. Yeah. Did you come back know. with any clothing or fabric? <laughs> Maybe I'm being too touristy, <laughs> but. <laughs> I mean, I went sort of backpacking, right? Yes. So I had this little backpack that had like everything of mine. So I barely came back with much yeah. stuff. Not even a man. Though I must say, I must say, uh, one of my most asked questions was why I'm not married. Yeah. Uh, people thought that it's something okay. wrong. They were asking you why you didn't wear it. Yeah, because people typically get married much younger. Mm. And so, you know, there was kind of this big question I was about with this girl. I got her story. And I'm curious, what was your answer? <laughs> To them, um, yeah. No, I was just like, I just haven't come across anyone interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, but, what but, are they taking? I, I'm in Uganda, what they do is they take a, a snap. A snap is a photograph. So <laughs> <we're going. laughs> each, each uh, mom or aunt or somebody will come and show you their son, and like almost like a CV. Oh, saying he goes okay. to this university. Nobody trying okay, to. Okay, unfortunately, oh, okay, I get that far. I mean, like, yes. there's a few people who are trying to hook me up with yes. like their friends or whatever. Yes. Um, nothing interesting. <laughs> So, no. Oh my goodness, but this is so interesting. Then I went to, to figure out, to find out more about this like early marriage thing, right? Mm. And the very scary thing that you come across is like in Sub Saharan Africa, right? Of 24 year olds that are married today, a quarter of them got married before the age of 18, oh right? Mm. So there are a lot of pe young people who are getting married for sort of, you know, financial sustenance mm. and. Um, Not arranged. Sure. Uh, yeah, those kind of things, okay. uh, which is quite scary. Yeah. Mm. Wow, your experience has been so empowering. My goodness. You know, I watched this movie, Defo, um, and I vowed to myself that I'm going to go give back. Where am I today? I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. So you really, really have inspired me. It can be done. It honestly can be done. Um, Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, I don't know about you guys, but awesome. wow, I'm so wow, lightning. amazing. We should share this a lot more. Because and maybe even write a book. And maybe even write a book, kind of the same. I'm actually in the process of doing it. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll look out for your book. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. It has That's been such an yeah. honor. Wow. Thank you, Amu. And we'll be right back.
That is, I love music. I love music, and I'm so glad to be inviting a very special young woman. Her name is Mbendulo. She's just coming from Oslo. Okay. Um, and she was there for the Marumba, Africa Marumba Festival. Okay. Yeah, she's so just going to just, it's a jazz oh, festival. Wow. So okay. she's going to just uh, ignite us with her tunes. <laughs> <laughs> Join us, girl. <laughs> After my grandmother's passing, okay. um, when she basically, when I was on my way to Grahamstown to perform, mm. my mother called me and just told me that um, my grandmom passed on. Mm. So it was like um, a sad but good experience in the, in the same sense. Um, when she was in hospital, she heard angels sing out her name. And she kept on um, asking her sister, which she wasn't there, um, Goodness, that's the name of the song, to sing along with her with these angels. So when I came back, they told me the whole story. Yeah. And I got so inspired mm -hmm. that she knew her own destiny before she got there. And sure. yeah, I took that and then I wrote a song about it. So oh no, now I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. All right, there we go. Mm -hmm. 